Hello everyone, I am Charleston DeMello, a geology student from St. Xavier's Autonomous College, Mumbai. Today, I will be presenting a study conducted on calculating the estimated carbon dioxide emissions from thermal power plants across India. This study has been conducted for the years 2019-20, 2020-21 and 2021-22. Along with analysis of the emission data, we have also predicted national carbon dioxide emissions for the years 2022-23 to 2025-26. The last study conducted of this kind was done by Mittal, Sharma and Singh in 2012. Ours is the only study of such kind in the last decade on various levels. India has one of the richest reserves of coal. As of 1st April 2022, India's estimated coal reserves stands at 361.41 billion tons. Out of this, around 188 billion tons can be readily extracted. The three Indian states with the highest coal reserves are Odisha, Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh. Developing countries rely mainly on thermal power plants to meet their electricity demands. With such rich reserves, coal is the most favorable fuel for generating power in India. Thus, more than 75% of India's energy demands are met through thermal power plants. In some cases, however, Indian coal is not of the best quality. Its high ash content, coupled with considerably low calorific value, makes its use in coal-fired power plants less efficient. In this presentation, we will take a look at India's energy demands, the generation scenario, and India's thermal generation capacity. We will also be looking at the methodology used to conduct this study, as well as analyze carbon dioxide emissions on a national, state and power plant level. We will also be predicting carbon dioxide emissions for the future. As it can be seen in the graph on screen, India's power generation has been increasing over the years considerably. We have doubled our generation from 2010 levels and are projected to generate 1,750 billion units of electricity in the current financial year of 2024. The average rate of increase in power generation over the years stands at 5.7%. One can however notice the drop in energy generation in the year 2020-21 owing to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, the next year onwards, the trend seems to be rising just like before. As of 31st March 2021, India's generating capacity stands at 2,93,172 megawatt with thermal generation making up 2,38,771 megawatt out of the total. This is followed by hydroelectric generation of 47,620 megawatts and nuclear generating capacity of 6,780 megawatts. The map to the left shows the location of various power plants that includes thermal, nuclear as well as hydroelectric all across the country. As for India's thermal generating capacity, coal-fired power plants make up up to 90% of the total. This is followed by natural gas, lignite and diesel powered stations respectively. To calculate the estimated carbon dioxide emissions from thermal power plants, we use the Central Electricity Authority's user guide for Carbon Dioxide Baseline Database for the Indian Power Sector, published in May 2017. The values for fuel consumption were obtained either from the organization's annual reports or calculated using the units generated data. Values for the remaining parameters were taken from the assumptions made in the CEA's user guide stated earlier. 
as per our calculations, India's national carbon dioxide emissions increased at an average rate of 4.32% from 955.7 million metric tons in 2019-20 to 988.87 million metric tons in 2020-21 to 1040 million metric tons in 2021-22. We now move ahead to analyze the state-wise emissions for the year 2019-20. As seen, Chhattisgarh has the highest carbon dioxide emissions from thermal power plants, followed by Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra and Gujarat, closing out the five states with the highest carbon dioxide emissions. In the next year, the top six states from the previous year stay the same. Tamil Nadu and Odisha can be seen moving up a few spots, indicating an increase in carbon dioxide emissions from thermal power stations. However, Telangana is seen moving down a couple of spots owing to a decrease in emissions. From 2020-21 to 21-22, Gujarat witnessed a considerable drop in carbon dioxide emissions. Meanwhile, all other states witnessed a rise in emissions with respect to 2020-21 levels. Telangana too moved up a couple of spots with emissions greater than that of 2019-20 levels. It must be noted that the three graphs for the three years, there are some states with no carbon dioxide emissions from thermal power plants. This is either due to no thermal power plants in the state or due to non-functioning thermal power plants. The trends seen in the last three slides can be visualized with the help of Coropleth maps representing the same data. You can pause the video here to view and analyze individual states respectively. Out of the 253 thermal power plants located across the nation, here is a graph showing the relationship between the number of units generated and the annual carbon dioxide emissions by the 20 power plants with the greatest emissions of the year 2021-22. For almost all of the power plants, it can be noticed that an increase or decrease in carbon dioxide emissions corresponds to an increase or decrease in the number of units generated respectively. In the case of Mundra and Tiroda power plants, it is observed that a drop in the units generated from 2019-20 is accompanied by a considerable decrease in carbon dioxide emissions. However, in the case of Maharashtra's Chandrapur super thermal power station, we witness a decrease in carbon dioxide emissions from 2019-20 to 2021-22. Even though the number of units generated was greater from in 2021-22 than it was in 2019-20. This slide contains the carbon dioxide emission data about the 20 power plants discussed in the previous slide. The following graph contains the data calculated by Mittal Sharma and Singh in 2012, as well as the data calculated in this study. It also contains the predictions put forth by both the studies. As per the study conducted in 2012, carbon dioxide emissions increased at an average rate of 5.9% per year. For our study, carbon dioxide emissions increased at a rate of 4.34% from 2019-20 to 2021-22. As per our prediction, carbon dioxide emissions are set to increase at an average rate of 4.14% till 2026. Although, it must be noted that our predictions are made on the basis that there is no change in generating capacity. Therefore, any variation in predicted values and the values observed in the future are expected. I hope that this presentation and the study conducted has provided an insight about the carbon dioxide emissions from thermal power plants. With rising carbon dioxide emissions every year, CCS can prove to be a viable option 
to help India reduce its greenhouse gas emissions. In case of any queries, you can contact me at the email IDs provided on screen. Thank you.